I'm Patrick Bryan, here reporting the top five sports events and movies for the year 2010. Here are my top five sports events, five through one. Number five, the Winter Olympics. The world came together to celebrate the Olympics in Vancouver, Canada. The Games received high ratings in Canada, the host country, led with 14 gold medals, including in hockey, where they won over the U.S. in an epic overtime game, 3-2, with superstar Sidney Crosby scoring an overtime goal. Now, I'm not a big fan of ho hockey, but this was a must-watch game. Number four, Roy Halladay's perfect game. Roy Halladay threw a perfect game for the Philadelphia Phillies on May 29, 2010, with 11 strikeouts. In that game, he pitched against the Florida Marlins. Halladay had a great season in 2010 with a 21-10 record and a 2.44 ERA with 219 strikeouts on his way to a unanimous, unanimous choice as the National League Cy Young. Number three, Saints NFL Championship. The Saints defeated the Indianapolis Colts 31-17, with Drew Brees throwing 32-39 with two touchdowns and 288 yards, winning MVP. The Saints celebrated their first ever Super Bowl with a huge win in an extremely satisfying game. Number two, Lakers-Celtics NBA Championship. The Lakers beat their rivals, the Boston Celtics, in a seven-game series. The final game had a score of 83-79, and superstar Kobe Bryant was voted MVP. Number one, bid the big three in Miami. Attracting nearly 10 million viewers, NBA MVP LeBron James decided he was taking his talents to South Beach to play for the Miami Heat. There he joined stars Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. So far, they've started off slow, but they've now won eight in a row and look forward to facing the Red Hot Celtics later in the playoffs. Hi, I'm Alex Fye here with my top five plays that occurred throughout the world in 2010. And number five was that 2010 was no hitter prone. This year, not only were six no-hitters thrown, two of them were perfect games. Roy Halladay had thrown a perfect game in May and a no-hitter in October in the playoffs. Also, a large mess-up by an umpire made it six, not seven, and then he had publicly apologized. Coming in at number four was Butler's run to the finals. Butler, coming in at a five seed, went all the way to the finals and missed a buzzer beater to lose to Duke. To get into the finals, they had to beat elite teams such as Syracuse, Kansas State, and Michigan State. At number three, the Saints win the Super Bowl. Not only did they come back from seeing their fans wear bags on their heads, but they had come back from Hurricane Katrina. The entire city of New Orleans had been devastated. But after the Saints won the Super Bowl, they were partying until July. At number two, Canada versus USA in the finals. After America had beaten Canada in an earlier match in the Olympics, Canada had brought it into overtime. Canada's MVP, Sidney Crosby, had a goal in overtime to beat America in the finals. Finally, at number one, Spain defeating the Netherlands. After no scoring for the first 90 minutes in the game, it went into overtime. Spain star David Villa was taken out, and the Spanish fans were upset. 116 minutes into the game, with four minutes left, Andres Iniesta scored for Spain, and it went crazy. I'm Alex for YBA Sports, and those are my top five plays of 2010. Hi, I'm Dylan, and these are my top five sports stories of the year of 2010. Number five was New England quarterback Tom Brady gets in a car crash and becomes the highest paid player in the NFL all in just one day. My fourth story is that the Boston Red Sox sign Carl Crawford and acquire Adrian Gonzalez, both tremendous players. And the number three was a great miracle. The Saints with their first Super Bowl in franchise history went away to rebuild that city. And two was the Miami Heat signed Chris Bosh and LeBron James in order to form the big three. And the top story of 2010 was Tiger Woods not winning a single tournament and he loses his number one world spot ranking. I'm Dylan Volman and that's my top five. Hi, I'm Jeff Davidson for YBA Sports and these are my top five moments in Boston sports this year. Starting at number five, Bruins acquired the speedy Tyler Sagan. Sagan was the second overall pick in the 2010 draft last summer. Sagan has been a major role in the Bruins' recent success as the Bees look forward to a promising season. Number four, or number 12, Tom Brady. The New England Patriots quarterback is looking better than ever and is on his way to another MVP-type season. The Patriots are first in the AFC East and have the best record in the, in the NFL, standing strong at 10-2. Number three, this may, be, this may bring back some nightmares for Boston fans as the Celtics dropped the seventh game to the LA Lakers in the NBA Finals. 
Leading with only six minutes remaining, Kobe Bryant and his Lakers stormed back to steal the second championship from Boston in the past three years. Number two, John Eisner defeats Nicholas Mahu 70 to 68 in the third set at, set at Wimbledon on the greatest show on grass ever. Now, number one, the most recent story in sports is the Boston Red Sox off-season genius of acquiring first baseman Adrian Gonzalez from the San Diego Padres and free agent Carl Crawford. Adding these two all-stars to the lineup definitely puts the Red Sox in contention for another World Series title. Look for a promising year from the Sox. That's all for now. I'm Jeff Davidson, reporting for YBA Sports. Hi, I'm Jesse Mayfield Sheehan for YBA, and these are my top five sports stories for 2010. For number five, I'm a Boston sports fan. We're passionate about our sports teams, so I have to start local with the Boston Celtics and, they run, and the run they made in the 2010 playoffs. Nobody thought the Celtics would go that far in the playoffs, and then they retaught us an important lesson in sports. Defense wins championships, as they made an impressive run coming within just four points of the team's 18th championship. For number four, the perfect game that wasn't. Tigers pitcher Armando Galarraga was one out away from the first perfect game in team history, but was denied it by one of the worst calls I have ever seen by umpire Jim, Jim Joyce. It was a call so off and so costly that it brought the umpire to tears and brought him to publicly apologize to Galarraga. You get a World Series every year in baseball, but how often do you see an umpire apologizing for a blown call? For number three, the John Isner Nicholas Mahout match. I know tennis isn't the biggest sport in the US, but it's a big sport worldwide, and this story was bigger than any story in the tennis world this year. It was a world record, enough said. For number two, the Saints winning the Super Bowl. New Orleans was a city that the whole nation rallied around a few years ago after Hurricane Katrina. And this recent football season, that city round, round, rallied around their red hot football team, the Saints. They almost go undefeated, they meet the other near undefeated team in the Super Bowl, they start off the second half with an onside kick and succeed. You throw in that dramatic interception return touchdown and the team's first Super Bowl win in history, and you've got one of the sappiest sports stories you will ever get in the world of reality. You can't write this stuff. My number one story is a story that apparently you can write, just not very well. Miami's Big Three. LeBron James does a one-hour show on ESPN just to announce that he's joining Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami to make a run for a championship? Really? This sparked an uproar in the world of basketball, with analyses, critiques, criticisms, and comparisons to the 2008-2007 Celtics. So how did things go when the Heat met the Celtics for the first game of the season? They scored only 80 points, and the Celtics wound up winning, and are currently looking like the team to beat in the Eastern Conference. And this story continues into this new year of 2011. Those are my top five sports stories for 2010. For YBA, I'm Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Hi, I'm Max Block, and this is my top list of sports stories from 2010. I'll start at number five with the NFL's crackdown on hits. Seems every week there's a new player being suspended for a hit on a wide receiver, a quarterback, basically any player on the field. You look at one example from the Pittsburgh Steelers, Defensive Player of the Year just a few years ago, James Harrison, has been fined $125,000 this season, four different fines for all his hits on quarterbacks, defenseless wide receivers, and personally I think that it's getting a little bit ridiculous. They seem to be finding a new player every week for hits that sometimes might be a little bit too hard, but sometimes they're just hits. They're playing the game. When you have your momentum going towards a quarterback or a defenseless wide receiver, sometimes you got to lay down the hit. It's part of the game. Move on to number four, which is Wimbledon. John Isner, Nicholas Mahout, one of the greatest matches in tennis history. Isner wins in the 138th game of the fifth set, 70 to 68. The game spanned over 11 hours, multiple days. And for myself, who wasn't really a tennis fan, you turn on this game, you really can't shut it off. It was certainly something to see, something that rarely, if, if ever, is going to happen again. And Isner came out on top. It was just a great game. It really didn't matter who won. Look at number three. Move over to the MLB this past season. Perfect games and no hitters. They came in multitudes. You had two perfect games with Roy Halladay and Dallas Braden. The not so perfect game with Armando Galarraga, where Jim Joyce, umpire Jim Joyce, blew the call at the end. But what can we do about it? Then you go to no hitters. You also had another Roy Halladay no hitter in the playoffs. Great game pitched by him. Ubaldo Jimenez, Matt Garza, Edwin Jackson. It really made it entertaining for fans like myself to watch. You're watching a team that you don't even care about. You would never watch a game, but. Guy's got a perfect game or a no-hitter going into the 8th, ninth inning. You have to turn it on. 
And it really, these pitchers are not necessarily the best pitchers in the MLB. It showed that anyone on any day can go out and pitch a great game. Move to number two, we go to hockey, the Olympics. Canada, USA in the finals. Who could have asked for a better matchup? Canada obviously expected the win. USA serving more of, as the underdogs. You had USA goalie Ryan Miller lead them all the way here. Then in overtime, tied 2-2 game. Sidney Crosby, probably the best player in the world, sneaks a goal right past Ryan Miller. They win in overtime, but the USA certainly has nothing to be ashamed of. It was a great tournament. Not necessarily the biggest hockey fan, but you had to watch it. You had to root for the U.S. You had to jump on the bandwagon, and it was certainly a great time for the whole country of the U.S. and Canada. Move on to number one. You got to go to basketball. Miami Heat bringing in the big three. LeBron James, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, all signing. Pay they got their pay cuts a little bit cut short, but all signing for about $14 million to come together and do one thing, and that's win a championship. They started off a little bit slow. They won eight straight games. They're 17 and eight, but you got to look at the Eastern Conference defending champs, Boston Celtics. They beat them in Boston, beat them in South Beach, and they certainly seem to have the hold of the Eastern Conference. That's going to do it for my top five list. I'm Max Block, YBA Sports. I'm Ryan, here for YBA Sports, and here are my top stories of the year. At number five, I have the decision. You know LeBron James' decision to play for the Miami Heat? This story has to be the biggest story in the NBA. Having LeBron go to the Heat to join D-Wade makes this team supposedly unstoppable. Then you add Chris Bosh to the group, and you make a new big three in Miami. It's not only the big three, it's the huge three. They still can't beat the Celtics though, but hey, they are the huge three. At number four, I have the Auburn's quarterback, Cam Newton scandal. This is a huge story because anytime a father asks for money from his school, it makes for a good story. Then add in the fact that the kid is a Heisman candidate as Cam was and, in the, and is now the Heisman winner this year. This story is just the beginning though. Will Cam Newton have to return the Heisman in a few years like Reggie Bush did this year? We'll have to find out until 2011 to find out. At number three, the cold winter days of the Vancouver Olympics, specifically the gold medal hockey game between Canada and the U.S. Team USA uh, wasn't even supposed to get out of the quarterfinals. The American team scored, though, with 24 seconds left in the game to put the to push the game into overtime. Then, in OT, NHL's own Sidney Crosby scored to win the game for Canada, their eighth gold medal in hockey. My second biggest story this year comes from the world of tennis. Second round match at Wimbledon, John Isner and Nicholas Mahout was the longest match ever played. This match went 11 hours, the longest in tennis history. The final set score, 70-68. This is not only the biggest game in tennis, this is the longest game in tennis history. In my opinion though, the number one story of the year was the disappearance of Tiger Woods from the golf. The incident with his new ex-wife, Elin, happened on Thanksgiving of last year, but the fallout and the decline of his play happened this year. 2010 was the first year that he never won a tournament. He missed two cuts, and even though he played well in the Ryder Cup, the U.S. team still lost. He's no longer the number one player in the game, but this year he is hoping to come back with vengeance. I'm Ryan from YBA Sports. Those are my top five, story, top five stories of the year.